In this video, I'm going to teach you how to set white balance in your image editing software with digital photographs that were shot in the RAW format. This only works for RAW pictures. You don't want to do this with JPEG files. So the ability to adjust your white balance after you shoot the picture is one of the great advantages of shooting RAW. Now there's, there's several different ways to set white balance. You can set the white balance in the camera. Um, most cameras have an auto white balance setting where the camera decides itself what white balance settings to use. And they typically have some presets for things like daylight or shade or overcast days or fluorescent lights and, and tungsten lights and whatnot. Um, so you can choose those. And my experience has been that those presets don't really work very well. Um, usually I either shoot in the, white, in, the, in the auto white balance setting, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. But that's okay because we can correct it in, in post-processing using the techniques I'm going to show you here. Or you can use a handheld color temperature meter, like the ones that I've got here. Um, these are basically a handheld light meter that, that measures the color of the light and tells you what color settings to put into your camera. Um, most digital cameras um, have a place where you can go in and enter in these settings manually. And these work very well. Now the downside to them is that they're very expensive. That's an extra step that you got to take when you're, when you're photographing to get out that meter and take that reading and then go through your camera's menus and find the place to do the setting and input the numbers. Um, or another thing that you can do then is um, you can use um, white balance cards like these and I'm going to show you more detail how to use these when we get into Lightroom. Now I'm going to use Lightroom for this example but what I'm going to teach you will work with pretty much any raw conversion software. I've used Lightroom, I've used Photoshop Camera Raw, I've used Capture One, I've used the software that Nikon and Canon include with their cameras. They all have pretty much the same controls and they do the same thing and they work the same way. So no matter what image editing software you're using, what I'm teaching you here should work for you. Now, there are three different controls that most software has for white balance. The simplest is a pull-down menu with presets, and this is just like the presets that are that are found on the camera. There's typically there's an auto mode, and there's uh, settings for different types of light, and then the custom mode where you can enter in your own numbers. Um, as shot is the default that you're going to get when you open a photograph in Lightroom or in most other software, and this is going to give you the picture with the light with the white balance settings that the camera encoded into the file when it was shot. Now, many times that may be perfectly well if, if you had the camera set correctly or, or the auto white balance worked well. Other times it's not, and that's what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna show you how to correct that. Now the example picture here, as I said, this was shot under incandescent light and it's too, it's too red looking, it's too warm. Now, um, I don't really, as I mentioned with the cameras, I really don't like these presets because most of them really don't work very well. I have found that the auto white balance setting in Photoshop sometimes works very well though. Um, but not always. It's like the camera the auto white balance. It's hit and miss. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Um, the second one that we're going to look at, and this is a much more powerful tool, one that's very useful, is the eyedropper. The idea behind the eyedropper is you choose that tool and then you find something in the picture that is either gray, and you're typically looking at something that's like a light gray, not a dark gray or a medium gray. You find something that's light gray or you find something that's white and you click on it. And the, the software will calculate a white balance setting that will, that will turn that gray or white object into a perfectly neutral toned gray or neutral toned white. And the idea is if you, get the, if you get that item looking neutral, then everything else in the picture should fall into place. Now in the real world, that doesn't often work well. The reason for that is that many things in the real world that are gray or white are not truly neutral gray or neutral white. You can see this if you go to a, if you go to a home improvement store and look at the paint that's on sale for, you know, for painting your house. There's many different, different types of grays. There's warm grays and cool grays and and such, and the same with whites too. And so you're going to find in the real world there's going to be a lot of white objects and a lot of gray objects that are not perfectly neutral. And if you use one of those objects with the eyedropper, you may get colors that are not perfect. And we can try that here in our example picture. Um, if we look around here, we've got, see this book right here has a white cover. So let's go ahead and click it. 
and we see it's transformed the picture it's calculated a white balance but i think that looks too cool this uh this wood is is not so bluish like that it's a warmer colored wood you know this orange here should really pop out as more of an orange um even these even these blacks here look kind of cool on these photo albums so this didn't give a good result. This obviously wasn't a perfectly neutral white. Now, an op an another option is, because in the real world a lot of white and gray objects are not truly neutral, um, an option is to get an object that truly is neutral and put it in the scene and take a picture of it. And that's what I've done here with this. This uh, gray card here is called a Y-Bow card. And Y-Bow is a brand name of white balancing cards. There's several different manufacturers that make these things. And all of them pretty much work the same. Basically, it's a it's a it's a card made either of plastic or cardboard. That is designed to be a truly neutral light gray tone. And the idea is, you take this card and you place it in the scene, and you take a picture of it. And then you take it out of the scene and go ahead and shoot the rest of your pictures. And then when you get into your processing of the pictures, when you're processing your raw files, you start out with the one that has the card in it and you do your eyedropper off the card. And you can see here it's given very good color. Um, this is pretty much, most of the stuff, this stuff all looks pretty much the way it should. It's very good neutral color. Um, we've gotten our warmth back into the into the wood here. The orange looks a lot more orange. Um, my spider's brown face looks more like the warm brown that it is. Um, and so once you've once you've gotten your white balance by clicking the eyedropper on the card in the first picture you shot, then you take note of the numbers that are up here for the temperature and tent settings, and you basically just input those same numbers in all the other pictures you shot under that same light that day. And you should get the same color then in all of them. And this is a pretty easy solution because the white balance cards, um, you know, they're not terribly expensive. I think this one was about $20, which in a way is kind of a ripoff or something that's a piece of plastic, but it is perfectly neutral and, and it gives you it gives you great results and it's it's much easier than trying to find something in the real scene that was neutral which you may not even be successful at doing so so this is a pretty easy way to get perfect white balance is just you know get one of these white balancing cards and you know take a picture of it in the scene do the do the eyedropper then transfer the numbers um, now the third thing that's that's available to you is the sliders and the manual input for the numbers and I'm going to go back here to our as shot version that's too warm so that we can manipulate these and show how they work. Um, there's two different white balance settings. There's temperature and there's tent. Um, temperature controls the balance between blue and red. And you can see here if we slide this toward the, toward the red side, which for some reason Lightroom shows as a yellow, but it really is giving you more of a red tone. Or we can slide it toward the blue and we can see the picture gets cooler and see it gets warmer. Now you want to slide this a little more slowly and watch it as the color changes until you get it where it should be. And it takes a little practice to do this right. Um, a lot of people find it intimidating and it just takes some practice getting used to what good color should look like. Um, I find this really useful especially you know if I shot with the y balance with the y bow card there are scenes in which perfectly neutral, scientifically perfect color is not the right color for your photograph. Um, an example would be, you know, if you're shooting at sunset, you know, the you you want that warm light to show in the picture, and using the white balance card is gonna is gonna try to cancel that out to make everything look neutral. And so there's gonna be scenes like that where a perfectly neutral color isn't right for you. And so in that case, you're going to want to use the manual sliders to put that warmth back in there, for example, in a sunset picture. Now, you can also input the numbers manually, which you usually probably wouldn't want to do unless you've used a color temperature meter. Because you can use the color meter and just note down the numbers and then enter them in later in Lightroom or in your, your software if you don't want to be bothered with going through your camera's menus and entering it in there. Now, what do these numbers actually mean? What's temp and what's tent? Well, as I said, temperature controls the balance between red and blue. Um, the reason it's called temperature is because it, um, 
color temperature is based on the idea of something called a black body radiator. And what a black body radiator is, it's, it's something, typically a piece of metal, that when it's heated up to a very high temperature, it starts to glow with light. And you've all seen a blacksmith working with a piece of metal that's heated up so that it's, it's glowing red or glowing orange, depending on you know, how hot it is. The higher the temperature that the piece of metal is heated, the cooler the light coming off of it will be. So if it's heated up very, if it's heated up hot enough to start glowing with light, it's going to be maybe, you know, red. We get it, as the temperature increases, it's going to shift toward a yellow, you know, toward an orange, to then toward a yellow, and then it's going to start shifting toward a blue. And so the higher temperature actually gives, and this is kind of counterintuitive, the higher temperature gives a cooler color, gives a bluer color, where a lower temperature gives a warmer color. And how this relates to light is um, the color of, a, of, a, of an actual light source, whether it's the sun or whether it's a light source like an incandescent bulb or whatever, um, its color can be correlated to the color of light given off by something that's heated up and starts glowing with heat, like the piece of metal that the blacksmith works with. And so we can see here that the uh, color that we've gotten by clicking the eyedropper on the YBAL card, it says the color temperature is 2769. And so this is this is the uh, the light that I shot this picture under. Is the same color of light that would be given off by a piece of metal heated up to two thousand seven hundred and sixty nine degrees. Now you often hear these referred to as Kelvin numbers or degrees Kelvin, and the reason is that color temperature for light is not using the traditional. It's not using the temperature scales that we're familiar with. It's not using Celsius. It's not using the Fahrenheit scale. It uses another temperature scale, which is used in science, that's called the Kelvin scale. And the Kelvin scale is a lot more logical in some ways than the Fahrenheit and Celsius scales. Um, both Fahrenheit and Celsius have the possibility of having negative temperatures. You can have, you know, 5 degrees below zero or 10 degrees below zero or whatever. Um, the Kelvin numbers actually start at absolute zero. So zero in the Kelvin scale is absolute zero, and absolute zero is what scientists call the lowest temperature that's possible to achieve. And that lowest temperature that's possible to achieve is negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. Um, or if you're using the Fahrenheit scale, it's negative 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. That's absolute zero. And so the Kelvin scale starts at absolute zero and goes up from there. So it's a much more logical because zero really is zero in the Kelvin scale. There's no below zero there. Um, and that's the scale that's used for color, for measuring the color of light. So the 2769 degrees Kelvin that this was set at, that's 2769 degrees above absolute zero. And now the other control, the tent control, this is controlling um, uh, shifting the color from between green and magenta. If you're shooting under daylight or if you're shooting under incandescent bulbs or halogen bulbs, this is not going to be a terribly useful setting because these those light sources really don't experience any kind of a shift in the green magenta uh, the green magenta axis. This is mostly used for artificial light sources like fluorescence and LEDs. Um, fluorescents especially often um, are deficient in reds and deficient in magenta and they tend to give pictures that are too green and so in that case you're going to want to use the tent slider to increase the amount of magenta. Now if you're using the eyedropper with a white balance card that's already done for you, you don't need to worry about it but if you're if you're color balancing a scene manually if you shot under those kind of light sources and you didn't use a white balance card, then you're going you're gonna to find yourself wanting to use the tent slider. And here's, here's what it looks like on the pictures. As we go toward the magenta, now this picture here didn't need a change in the tent slider, so by going upward we're really making it look awful. Um, and then by going back down to the green side, we're making it look real greenish. But if you shot under fluorescence and you have a picture that's too green, then you're going to want to increase this, and that extra magenta is actually going to make the picture look more neutral. So that's what the sliders do. Um, the temperature slider is going to be the most important, and if you're going to use the manual sliders, you should start with it. 
Once you get this as close as possible, then you can go down to the tent and make adjustments if necessary. And as I said, if you're shooting under daylight or with incandescent bulbs or halogens, you may not want to even mess with the tent slider. You, you're going to work mostly with the temperature slider. If you're shooting under LEDs or fluorescence, then you're going to be needing both. And I would start with the, te start with the temperature, get it as close as possible, then go to the tent next. If you start out with the tent slider first, it may be harder to get proper color because once you adjust this, then you may need to adjust the tent again. So it's better just to start with the temperature and go to the tent. Um, so that's all there is to it. Um, and this is this is going to be consistent with pretty much every other raw conversion software. They're all going to offer those same things. You're going to have a list of a list of presets you can choose from. They're going to have an eyedropper tool, and you're, they're going to have the manual sliders. In a place where you can enter in numbers manually as well.